Good morning and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the program, Corporate Governance Platform, right here on ECO 89.7 FM. Corporate Governance Platform is brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan, which is the only professional body that's authorized in Nigeria to conduct examinations leading to the qualification of chartered secretaries and administrators. It's a leading recognized professional body in Nigeria that's dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. My name is Fumme Omoburiwo. On the program today, we will be looking at the contributions of the board committees to good corporate governance. And our guest this morning is Mr. Chris Ayako, ACIS, Managing Consultant, CEO Z Osowa, an associate as a member, Publicity and Advocacy Committee of Ixan, is also the coordinator of Ixan Lecture Center at Lekki. Good morning, Mr. Ayako. Good morning for me. Good morning, listeners. All right. Also here in the studio is Mr. Kaudi Ketefe, who is head of research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning, Fumi. Uh, dear listeners, good morning to you all. All right. Okay. We're going to take this message and we'll be right back. Hey, Obina. Good to see you. Uh, you look so worried. Is everything all right? I'm having serious issues in my company. Balancing the interests of my company's many stakeholders like shareholders, management, customers, financiers, governments, and communities giving us a problem. Mm, that has to do with corporate governance. Exactly. Then, you need to get in touch with ICSAN. Ixan? Yeah. Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. ICSAN. They provide you with seasoned and top-ranking professionals trained to uphold the standards of corporate governance and efficient operations. You can also get in touch with Ixan if you want to become a chartered secretary and administrator. Contact Ixan by visiting the website www.ixan.org or call 0090660169. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, so corporate governance platform right to 89.7 FM. Like I said earlier, we're looking at the contributions of the board committees to good corporate governance. And uh, uh, Mr. Chris Ayako, ACIS, is right here in the studio. Let's begin this way, Mr. Ayako. Uh, what are the committees that are traditionally recognized in corporate governance balance as board committees? Thank you very much. Uh, Basically, in line with uh, our Code of Corporate Governance 2018, we have four committees. This includes Audit Committee, Nomination Committee, Remuneration Committee, and of course, last but not the least, is Risk Management Committee. Okay. All right. Now, what roles do these committees play? I want to take it one step at a time, and as in each of these committees you've enumerated. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's start with uh, maybe let's start with the audit committee. And the audit committee, as the name implies, actually is a committee that is saddled with the responsibility of actually ensuring that the financial statement prepared by these entities are in line with. Uh, relevant accounting standard. For instance, presently we actually talk about international financial reporting standards. So that is one of the duties of the audit committee. And of course, it is the audit committee that ensure that a competent, independent audit firm is actually hired, you know, and uh, appointed to uh, handle that job. We have a nomination committee, basically is saddled with the tax of succession planning. It is this committee that actually ensure that at any point in time, there's no gap, you know, when we talk about executive position like directors, it is the committee that ensure that 
proper person that are suitably qualified are screened, selected, and nominated to the board to drive the vision and the mission of these entities. We also have a remuneration committee. Of course, this committee is basically saddled with the tax of coming up with a, a pay package policies, policies that actually define the pay package of directors, not only directors, but also very senior executive members that actually work hand in hand to achieve the objective of the company. While we talk about the risk management committee, ensure that they mitigate, they come up with policies that are robust enough to mitigate, mitigate the risk of the com companies, you know, at any point in time. Okay. Now, in all of this, uh, what ways uh, do these board committees contribute to uh, corporate governance? Yes. Uh, let's, let's look at the nomination committee. Of course, like we said earlier on, that its tag is basically to, uh, to handle issues pertaining to succession planning, nomination of uh, suitably qualified people on the board. Of course, it is the committee that ensures that the people that are on the board are actually effective enough to drive the vision of the board. And that committee will ensure that the board work in line with the ethics of corporate government to ensuring that no one person develop what we call domineering tendencies to becoming too powerful not to allow other people to actually contribute their uh their uh, contributions to moving the company forward. The audit committee ensured that, of course, transparency is a key when it comes to financial statement. Don't forget, it is this financial statement that you and I out there, we're talking about users, that rely on to make informed decisions. So for this financial statement to be actually uh, transparent, honest, you know, the audit committee plays a major role to ensure that corporate governance tenets are applied in preparing and presenting them. Okay, great. Now, will you say the rampaging uh, COVID-19 pandemic has in any way put additional pressure on companies and organizations uh, to make their committees more effective? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, let's look at a uh, uh, nomination committee. You know, the nomination committee of course, it actually, we've talked about it's a basic assignment. So how would they actually be more effective? Of course, the truth remains that the board must always have persons that are competent at any point in time to deliver. And when we talk about competence, we are looking at, we are look, looking at ways of developing capacity in terms of manpower development. So it is the committee that actually is saddled with this responsibility to ensure that the people that are presented to work as board committee board members are working effectively without wasting organizational time otherwise issues might go wrong then we we'll look at the audit committee the audit committee of course one of the primary objective of corporate governance is to reduce cost of governance to the barest minimum. So it is the audit committee that will also ensure that in negotiating audit fee for external auditors, they ensure that they get the best fame and they get the best price for the company. All right. Now, the court stipulates uh, independent non-executive directors as integral members of all these committees. Now, why do you think this is required? Thank you very much. Well, uh, if you listen to the name you just pronounced there, we use the word independence. You know, independent actually means total freedom from undue pressure or influence. So these people are so independent to the extent that they, they are not so answerable, so to speak, to the executive directors. So to the extent that they cannot influence them to take a decision that's not to the best interest of the company. Because they are independent, then chances are that they are always there to ensure that they don't have any stake majorly, directly for themselves, but working for the interests of the organization. When I mean organization, I'm talking about the entire stakeholders, including consumers. Because if they're independent, then they will go for the best in terms of product, in terms of services, in terms of everything. Is it necessary for a smart company to establish all these board committees? Uh, when we talk about necessity, the answer is yes. But the question we should also ask is that, is it possible 
okay it's very necessary that they do but when you look at small companies by definition of a company anything that ends with ltd or plt is a company mm. and there are some of these ltds that they're just a husband and a wife and if you say they should go with this code then the possibility is not there but when you talk about the necessity looking at the role and the importance of the board my answer is yes Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chris Ayako, uh, for your uh, contribution there. Mr. Ketefe, let me come to you for some announcements. Thank you very much, Fumi. Our dear listeners, please listen attentively to the following announcements. Exam 44th Annual Conference and Dinner. This is to inform our members, other governance professionals, stakeholders and members of the public generally that the 44th annual conference of the institute will hold on thursday 19th november and friday 28th november 2020. the first day that is thursday 19th november is the day of the plenary session of the conference while the second day friday 28th november 2020 is the day of the dinner and awards the theme of the annual conference is entrenching the right governance framework for economic development and sustainability. Entrenching the right governance framework for economic development and sustainability. The conference also has three sub-teams. The sub-teams are, one, the new normal, emerging trends in corporate governance and its implication on business continuity. Second, digitalization and cyber security impact on businesses. Third, the revised companies and ally matters at 2020 opportunities for company secretaries. The event will be held in by hybrid method, that is to say that it will be both by physical attendance and virtual participation modes. The value of the conference is the share all of the Mission Center, Onikon, Lagos. By virtue of restriction of mass gathering imposed by the authorities against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, only a limited number of participants will be allowed to take part through physical method. Others will join virtually. The targeted participants are company secretaries, registrars, compliance officers, chief financial officers, directors of companies, political analysts, legal officers, and other persons interested in governance matter. Participation fee at the conference is 50,000 Naira. Please note that the payment between now, any payment made between now and September 38, 2020, will attract a discount of 10%. Please uh, try to enjoy this discount and save the date. For more information on this, please Contact Florence on 080-90-660-022 or Akume Fula on 080-237-83043. Let me take the numbers again. Florence on 080-90-660-022 or Akume Fula on 080-237-83043. 83043. Thank you very much and have a nice day. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kadi Ketef, head of research, uh, Ixan, and also our guest this morning, Mr. Chris Ayako, ACIS, member, publicity and advocacy committee of Ixan, coordinator, Ixan Lecture Center at Lekki, is also managing consultant and CEO, Z Osowo and Associates. We want to have you on the program, Mr. Ayako. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. My All right. Pleasure. Corporate Governance Platform returns next week, Wednesday, 10.15 a.m. Right, turn it to 9.7 FM. I am Fumi Omoburiu. Good morning.